Welcome back friends, Dan Vega here and in today's tutorial I want to talk to you about constructors in Java. So if you're new to the Java programming language you're probably aware that there are primitive data types and reference types. So with primitive data types we're used to just creating our variable and setting it in line using something like a literal. So with a string you might say string message is equal to and then in quotes whatever your message is going to be. Same with say an integer, uh, you may say int num is equal to one and that's all done there. So we're used to doing that with primitive types, but with reference types, how do we go about creating instances of our own objects? So that's really what I wanna focus on in today's tutorial. Uh, but before we get started, if you're new to this channel, my name is Dan Vega. I run the website danvega.dev. It's my personal website. If you head over there, you'll find a bunch of free information like articles and videos. I even have a course that is free, uh, completely free to get started with Java if you're new to the Java programming language. Uh, so please go check it out and learn a little bit more about what I do and what my interests are. So with that, let's get back to the tutorial. So I want to talk about constructors in Java and what we're going to do is we're going to cover the implicit uh, no arg constructor that is created for you in a class. So we'll see how that works. We'll also see how to override that implicit no arg constructor. Um, so explicitly creating our own. We'll also talk about creating your own constructors. So there are a couple of different ways to create your own constructors, uh, especially when you get into parameter naming. We'll see that there are different ways that you can name your arguments to your constructors and we'll see how that works. Uh, so I wanna look at an example of maybe calling a constructor from another constructor. Uh, so there's a way to do that. And then finally, I wanna take a look at uh, something called an initialization block. And the reason I'm doing that is because I threw out this uh, question on Twitter. Again, if you don't follow me on Twitter, please, please give me a follow. Um, so I said Java quiz time. If you want to create a new instance of this class, what is the value of the language's uh, variable and why? Bonus points if you actually know what this block right here is called. So you should know, I just said it, it's an initialization block. I figured I would throw this out here just in case there was something that came up, um, whether it was an interview or a quiz or some kind of coding question, but it's just something that's nice to know. So. We'll take a look at that at the very end as well. So with that, um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to use IntelliJ IDEA. Uh, you can use whatever ID you're most comfortable with. I'm using the Ultimate Edition, but there is a free version, the Community Edition, that would work fine with this example that we're doing today. You can use Visual Studio Code, you can use um, Eclipse, NetBeans, whatever ID you're most productive in. Nothing we're doing here today is, is that crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new project and what I'm gonna do is select Java. Again, I'm using Java 14. That doesn't really matter for the sake of today's uh, tutorial, but you can use whatever version of Java you would like. So I'm gonna create a project from the template and I'm going to hit next. And in Java, I'm gonna say Java constructors. The base package is dev.danvega. And while that's loading up, I will say as far as Java version goes, I might use something in Java 9, the list.of method, but um, I'm not particularly sure. So maybe use Java 9 and above. Uh, we'll check it out in a second. So here we are in my project and I have a public static void main. And so this is the main entry to any Java application. And here's where we could start coding. So I talked about it before. If you're going to create a variable called message, you can use what we call string literal. So I can come in here and say, hello world. And that allows me to um, give my primitive data type a type. So we're saying string, uh, well actually string isn't a primitive data type, but um, string message equals hello world, and that's using a string literal. Uh, but if we're using a primitive data type like uh, int, we can say int num equals one, and we are not 
We're not calling some type of constructor here explicitly saying create me a new instance of uh, this particular um, class. So this is fine for when we're using primitive data types, but what happens when we're using reference types? So reference types are really anything else, um, the objects that we're creating. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to start and create a new class. We're going to come in here. We're going to say new Java class. I'm going to call this developer. And in this developer class, I'm going to have a few properties. We call these instance variables in Java. There's a couple terms that you can refer to them as, but I'm going to continue to use instance variables. So we have some things that we want to define on this class. And the convention in Java is to Go ahead and make all of these instance variables private so they can't be accessed or mutated from the outside. And then what we do is we create getters and setters for each of these. So what I'm going to do is come in here and we're going to create a few properties here. We're going to create a, um, a variable. Um, let's go ahead and create this private. So we're going to create this as a first name. We're going to say we also need a last name. And finally, we're also going to have a list of strings, and this is going to be called languages. So what languages the developer has. So the next thing you would want to do, again, because these are all private, you will need to create getters and setters for these. So part of Java's knock is that it's very verbose and that like you have to like, there's a lot more typing involved, but if you're using an IDE, that really isn't the case. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to command N, which will bring up this generate. And you can start arrowing down or you can even start typing. And I just type getter and setter, select all of these, and now I have my uh, getters and setters. So I can also go ahead and create a two string, which I want, and that will generate that. So that is basically all I need for this particular class. Now, what I want to do is I want to come in here back to my main method. And I want to talk about creating an instance of that developer class. So to do that, I'm going to start with the type. So the type is developer. I'm going to give it a uh, variable name. We'll say developer. And I'm going to say that equals new developer. And this syntax checks out. There's no red squigglies. We're not getting any complaints from the IDE. This is a valid um, class. So we can go ahead and run this program and nothing would break. So how did this work? Well, in every class that we create, we get this implicit no arg constructor. And all that does is create a new instance for us, which we would then have to come in here and say uh, developer.set first name. We'll say Dan. Developer.set last name equal to Vega. And let's go ahead and print this out. Although. And so I'm going to go ahead and run this. And I might get, yep, so there we go. So first name Dan, last name Vega, languages equals to null. So that's one way that we can go ahead and create an instance of our class. And again, that um, no arg constructor is given to us for free. Now we can also go ahead and create our own constructors. Now, this is very important to understand too. Once we go ahead and create our own constructors, the implicit NOR constructor that we just use is no longer available. We can certainly fix that, but it's no longer available. So let's see this in action. So again, I could type this out if I wanted to, but I don't need to. Um, I'm gonna let the IDE go ahead and assist me. I'm going to generate a constructor with first name and last name. And now we have our own constructor that takes those two. If we head back over to our main application, though, you'll see the IDE complaining. It's going to say, hey, I found a constructor that has two arguments, uh, but I did not find a constructor that has no argument. So that constructor is now gone, but we can go ahead and uh, add that to our class if we want to continue to support that type of construction. So. I'm just going to come in here and say public developer, and it's going to take no arguments. I will save that, and if we head back over to main, that is now satisfied. So 
I want to also go ahead and create one the other way. So I want to say developer, new developer is equal to, actually let's call this something else. Let's say Mary is equal to new developer. And now what I want to do is pass in a couple arguments. Now I can pass in uh, both the first name and the last name. So I'm going to say Mary Smith. And that now creates an instance of Mary, and we can go ahead and print that out. And if I go ahead and run that, by the way, I'm running that with um, IntelliJ IDE's shortcut of Control Shift R. And you'll see we have an instance of our developer Mary, and that took a lot less code to create. Um, so that is a way to kind of create your own constructor. I do want to mention something here. When you use the IDE like I did here to create it, you'll notice that it created the argument names the same exact name as the variable names. So when you do this, this is called shadowing the instance variable names. And when you do this on the left side, when you're assigning whatever the argument is to the left side, you have to use this that says, hey, the instance variable in this class, in this class, so this dot first name is equal to first name coming in as an argument. Because if you just say first name equals first name, the compiler is going to go, whoa, whoa, what are you, what are you talking about? There, that, that seems like um, that shouldn't be allowed. Um, so that's an important um, thing to remember. Now you could name these arguments different. You can call this one first and that one last and then say, first name is equal to first, last name is equal to last, but I, I kind of generate these things, so I just kind of stick with what the IDE does, and honestly, I probably would do that if I typed it out myself anyway. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is the third instance variable in our class called languages. So this is a list of strings of all the languages the developer knows. And so what I want to do is actually create a new uh, constructor for that. So again, I'm going to come in here and generate this. I'm going to generate the constructor, and now we have two, or we have three constructors in here, a no arg constructor, one that takes a first name and a last name, and one that takes first, last, and languages. So we have a couple things that I want to do here. So first off, how can we go ahead and create a developer with um, all three of these arguments? So let's come in here. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new developer. We'll call this uh, developer Marcus, and we'll say new developer. And now we could create a noarg constructor developer. We can create a two argument with first name and last name, but I want to create a three argument constructor. So I'm going to say Marcus Johnson, and now I'm going to provide a list of languages that Marcus knows. And so to do this, I think I am going to use the list.of static method on the interface, and I'm going to say um, Java and JavaScript. So that should satisfy that. And if we were to go ahead and print out Marcus, we would see that Marcus has his languages in there. So uh, that works. And now what I want to do is take a look at the developer class. So something that I always kind of keep an eye out for is when I start duplicating code. So here I'm looking at this constructor, and here I'm looking at this constructor, and I see the same two lines of code. Now in a short example like this, it may not matter, but as classes start to get bigger, this can become an issue. So I'm duplicating code here. In essence, all I'm really doing is I'm going to um, create the first name and last name, and I'm creating basically an uh, you know the languages uh, variable is set to null. So maybe in this case, I want to create every instance of a developer is going to have the default language of Java. So to do this, I can con I can call a constructor from another constructor. And the way that we do that, let's get rid of that, and we're just going to call this. And now we take the first name, the last name, and now I just want to set languages to something. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go ahead and set this to Java. So now we haven't kind of duplicated that code, and we're calling another constructor from the constructor. So let's go ahead and run this. And now we should see that Dan and Mary both have, uh, oh, they don't. So we'll see that Mary has the language Java, but
but for Dan, it's actually null. And the reason for that is here in the NOARA constructor, we don't set languages to anything, right? Um, one thing that you can also do, I talked about initializing variables. You can initialize variables in constructors like this. You can also initialize them in line. And usually it's a good idea for something like a list to go ahead and set this to um, a new implementation here, which is uh, we're going to use an array list. So we may set that to an array list here. And if I run this, everything should work out just the same. So instead of being null, we now have an empty list of languages. Now that I have the empty list of languages, uh, I can go ahead and add to those if I wanted to, or just kind of overwrite that. So that's that. Uh, again, the one last thing that I want to show you is something called an initialization block. So let's look at this. So here in my initialization block, I'm going to do the same thing that I kind of did before. And I'm going, now that um, the, uh, the languages list is initialized, I'm just going to set a value to it. So I'm going to say languages is equal to list.of, and I'm going to pass some elements in here. So we're going to say Java, JavaScript. I've really been loving Go lately, and C Sharp. So we have a list of languages there. So the question, if you remember back in the tweet that I sent out, was if we were to go ahead and run something like this, what what do you think takes precedent here? So this is a this is a, an initialization block that would initialize that variable of languages to something. So let's go ahead and run that for all three of them, and let's see how what works out here. So you'll see the first one uh, has the languages Java, JavaScript, Go, and C Sharp. Second one has just Java. And the third one has Java and JavaScript. So if we go back to our developer class, we can see what's going on here. This initialization block will work if nothing, if we're not initializing that variable anywhere else in any of the constructors. If we're doing it in a constructor, that constructor is going to take precedence. So in the first case, we use the no arg constructor. Um, because we're not setting languages there, uh, it's going to use that initialization block to set up that variable languages equal to the Java, JavaScript, Go, and C Sharp. In the second one, we are calling the this, con, this constructor with first name and last name, um, but we're setting a default value of Java and then calling this constructor. And finally, in the third one, we're actually passing in Java and JavaScript, and that's why we get this. So I think that's where we're going to cut it off today. If you want, please go ahead and leave me any comments below if you have any questions about anything that you saw in this tutorial. Uh, also, if you found value in this video, please give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, that really helps me out. And as always, friends, happy coding.